Hello and welcome to part three of lecture one of ENGR 2301 Engineering Statics. In, the, uh, in lecture one, we are just going through some brief introductory material. Uh, many of it you probably, uh, much of it you'll probably have seen before uh, in other courses, but I'm just uh, applying some of these, going through some of these, and seeing how they apply um, to our course through the semester, or noting how, in what particular ways, they will apply uh, to this course. So uh, let's talk about units and dimensions. Units and dimensions. So, you've definitely heard units before, and you may have heard the term dimension, but not necessarily heard it defined in this context. So, we have two things that I want to talk about uh, the difference between units and dimensions. A dimension is really the property, a base quantity, or base property, or quantity, um, a base or a basic measurable property of an object. That would be one way of explaining it, although in this context it's really hard to define uh, explicitly what I mean by dimensions, uh, but I could say it's a base measurable property of an object. Um, but a measurable property an object can have but more more properly I should probably say that a dimension is the unitless thing upon which unit systems are built now we're getting almost philosophical uh, from which unit systems are built And then, in turn, let us consider a, uh, a unit. A way of measuring a dimension by comparing it to some uh, fixed value or agreed upon value. Uh, by comparing it to an agreed upon value. That's probably a good way of explaining that. agreed upon value. So for example, uh, now this may not make much sense yet, but this is one of those things that's probably best uh, explained by a, a example. So let's look at some examples of uh, dimensions and units. and units. And there are, uh, in any given system, you're only going to actually have three dimensions and everything else is built upon that. So for example, a very simple dimension is length. This describes a uh, size in space. And I'm going to indicate that with a capital L for a dimension of length. And the units for length uh, will be things will be any length unit you want to use. In the English system, it's going to be inches, feet, uh, etc. In and of course in metric, you have meters, centimeters, etc. Uh, then you can have uh, what what are, what are our other basic things? We have uh, mass m. And this would be in kilograms in the metric system, or in the English system, we can have either pound mass or slugs. But we're typically not going to deal with, uh, in this class, we're typically not going to deal with mass that much, we're mostly concerned with forces. So thankfully in this class, we can avoid the whole pound mass headache and just work with forces. But uh, that's fine. And then the other one is time. Capital T. And, uh, well, thankfully for, for this, we don't have only one unit, one base unit we need to worry about, and that is seconds. So this would be an FL, this would be an MLT system. If, you, if your system defines mass, length, and time as your fundamental dimensions, we refer to it as a MLT system. You can also have an FLT system, 
um, where you have where you add force as your fundamental uh, dimension. Uh, force, and then you would have length L and time T. So when I say fundamental, uh, really what I want to get at is that everything else, all the other units we use are built off of these. So for example, let us look at an MLT system. How can you build uh, quantities off of the uh, off of more basic quantities or more basic dimensions. Let's consider an MLT system. If we define mass, length, and time as the fundamental dimensions, then everything else is built upon that or is built upon that. So um, mass. Uh, so again, we have mass, length, and time. So what about something like acceleration? Acceleration in this case would not be a fundamental dimension. It would be built off of both um, length and time. Acceleration, and I would this would be uh, this would mean this uh, equals with a dot sign means has dimensions of uh, l over t squared. Think about uh, meters per second squared, the units for acceleration. So, uh, or we could say that's uh, l t to the negative two. Acceleration is built off of um, the dimensions of length and time squared. And then in turn, we could we can basically do this for anything we want. Force. Force has dimensions of well, I know I know force is mass times acceleration, and uh, so if, uh, if force is mass times acceleration and uh, acceleration has dimensions of this, force then uh, therefore must have dimensions of m l over t squared, or uh, m uh, l t to the negative two. And I could build, uh, we could also, if we defined, uh, if we were using an A FLT system, we would then have to recalculate mass in terms of the dimensions of force. And we can build this even for more complicated things, all the way up to things like viscosity and all this kind of stuff. Uh, elect well, electric field probably can't, would, we would need a little bit more than that. Uh, we just need to start putting in measurements for coolants and things like that. But for basic uh, things for Newtonian mechanics anyway, all you need is your MLT or FLT system. But as long as electromagnetism isn't uh, coming into play, you can get, a, get away with just an MLT system or FLT. Uh, so that's all well and good. Um, I, I do like to sort of illustrate what a unit is, what a dimension is. And uh, then of course, once we have our dimensions, a unit is just a way of describing what a dimension is. So for example, if I say something's a meter, well, or if I say something is two meters in length, there is nothing special in the universe about a meter. Length is actually something that is special in the universe. The universe is built around length. Objects have to, are capable of existing along certain spatial dimensions. Uh, time is a spatial dimension, uh, etc. But uh, or time is not a spatial dimension. Just, well, depending on who you ask. But uh, time is a dimension. Uh, but things like seconds, uh, things like uh, meters, these are arbitrary. Uh, different cultures through the ages have had different, all sorts of different units for length. All different cultures have had all sorts of different units for uh, time. If you were to uh, travel to an you know, uh, alien civilization somewhere, well, I can pretty much guarantee you they would not have the same uh, units for uh, length. They would not be using meters. They would not be using feet either. Um, they would not be using inches. They would not be using seconds. They would not be using newtons or whatever uh, we might, uh, 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 any other unit that we have chosen. But uh, if they had something close to science, they would have uh, very similar types of dimensions. Like they would have some, they would have, they would most likely, uh, we, you can't ever know, but um, they would most likely have some unit for length. They would most likely have some unit for time. They would most likely have some unit for force or mass. Um, ma your mass, length, time, these dimensions are independent of culture, time, distance. Well, they are made of type culture and distance. So I'm talking about they're independent of culture, they're in independent of history. They are more fundamental quantities of the universe, while uh, while individual units are things that we just assign value or we uh, values to, or we divide up the uh, a dimension into. But anyway, that's a bit academic. Um, what do you need to be able to do for this class? So uh, now that we've uh, opined a bit with the differences between units and dimensions, 
uh, how can we apply this to statics? So what do you need to be able to do with uh, units in statics? I'm not going to spend a whole uh, lot of time going through this, but you should be familiar with some basic things uh, coming from basic physics and other earlier courses. Uh, of course, you need to be able to do basic unit conversion. That's going to be important. Oh, length to uh, for converting uh, meters to inches, inches to feet. We'll use uh, different versions of them in this class, so you do make, need to make sure you are able to do that. Um, dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis, this is where you do things like, for example, if I wanted to convert from, uh, if I wanted to convert a density from kilograms per cubic meter into, uh, let's say, grams per cubic centimeter, I would do that by multiplying a thousand grams times one kilogram, and then times, oh, let's see, 100, uh, one meter, divided by a hundred centimeters. And this then taken to the third power because it's the third power here, and we'd multiply that out and we get the appropriate uh, the appropriate density. So, or you could actually just do this using powers of ten. Let's see, this is uh, uh let's see. Well, I don't have have a unit here, so that's fine. But that is the process we'd go through. But if it was say like oh seven kilograms per cubic meter, that would be a very low density. Um, let's make it, let's make it, oh, I don't know, uh, kilograms per cubic meter, let's make it, mm, could that be, let's say 3,000, nice even number, let's say we have 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter, so let's just do this using power of 10, this will be 3 times 10 to the third, times 10 to the third again, times, let's see, 10 to the negative 2, to the third power, so that's, uh, 3 times 10 to the 6th, 3 times 10 to the 6th, times 10 to the negative 6th, oh, and what do you know? We get 3 grams per cubic centimeter. That's nifty. So very basic uh, dimensional analysis, unit conversion, etc. And of course, you want to be familiar with the SI system. Now, I don't need to know really obscure ones like Zepto and things like that. But make sure you're at least good with everything from at least all the major ones from oh i don't know giga maybe terra on the high end uh giga these are just uh, this this is not necessarily even just particular to uh you know statics uh we're gonna very rarely have anything with the si prefix terra or giga in this class but these are just basic fundamental you know uh basic level engineering skills or basic math skills that anyone Math, math and science skills that anyone in a undergoing engineering ed education really needs to be comfortable with. So SI system we're talking about, of course, you know, uh, how can, can, working with SI prefixes, basically I would say, I would expect every engineering student should be able to work with everything from say, oh, I don't know, uh, giga or tera on the large end to nano on the small end. Uh, working with those, you know, 10 to the nine, if you can go from 10 to the nine to 10 to the negative nine, you're good. That's really the only ones you need to memorize. Uh, at this point in your, edu your education, you should be able to do that without, ho hopefully without uh, consulting any kind of chart. I would expect you to be able to do that off the top of your head. So uh, SI systems, uh, prefixes, etc. Do make sure you're aware of that. And if not, I'm sure there are plenty of good YouTube videos uh, that you can find walking through that. And I know it may be found in some textbooks as well. Okay, so that's the basics of units, what you need to know for statics class. Again, this is just an introductory lecture covering a few things today. That'll do for part three, and we'll come back shortly for part four. Thank you.